Have you ever wondered what a map of the Linux kernel would look like? Well, look no further because there's an open source project for it and you can explore it yourself. I'll make sure to post a link in the description below. This is from makelinux.net and it's an open source project that you can actually scroll into and view the various different system files that belong to all the subsections of the Linux kernel map. Now, honestly, it is a little fidgety, but it's not too bad especially if you're trying to get an understanding of how all the internal workings of the kernel coincide and work together, what they have to call, where they go through. It looks like a jumbled mess, but let's go through this a little bit just to kind of understand what we're looking at. So the Linux kernel map here, it says functionalities, which are the various subsystems I like to call them, of the kernel. So you have the human interface, what the person interacts with, the system interfaces, processing, memory, storage, and networking. Typically what you'll hear is the primary interfaces are these of the kernel and that is in the user space plane. That means this is what the user actually has access to. So for example, if we zoomed into something here like networking, we'd see that we have various different functions that we can access from the user space, such as socket call, connect, accept, bind, listen, send message, receive message, and set socket options. And that system socket from the user layer goes down to creating a socket and is a part of a protocol family, which in turn calls various other operations on the system. But you can again see how things get created. So if this inet create was called, then it goes down to proto operations and can call a couple more things down here, which goes into your protocols, which goes further into the network interfaces and continues down to the actual device drivers, which interface with the hardware. Yes, it's complicated, but that's why Linux is so great. And especially the people who help develop it, make documentation and just contribute overall their time and effort into building this wonderful kernel for us, free and open source. This interactive map was made by Constantine, but let's keep going through things. So we already talked about these subdivisions. So we have columns and then we talked about user space interfaces. This is actually what the user can access as far as the various different subsystems here. And are you ready to start learning more about Linux today? Check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. There's also a link in the description below. Now this isn't quite all the way up to date. I believe the user who was maintaining it hasn't updated it in a long time. I think this is actually based on uh, kernel version 2.6, but it still helps us to understand how the kernel is laid out in a sense and how everything has to interact together in order to actually talk to your devices or hardware on your computer. So talking about, we have a virtual space, bridges that have to happen before they get down to logical subsystems then device controllers, and finally hardware interfaces or drivers before they get into the actual hardware space where something is done and returned all the way up the chain. The virtual row includes security, device, model, threads, virtual memory, virtual file systems, protocol families, bridges, which in a sense is just a transport layer between the user space and more low level kernel functions. Then we cross a bridge, which defines more modules such as debugging, synchronization, memory mapping, page caching, swapping, network storage, and socket splicing. Sometimes you don't have to go over the bridges. Instead, you can go directly to the logical portion where functions actually get implemented through drivers or devices, which again are both in the device control and hardware interfaces section. In the logical, we have HI subsystem, system run, scheduler, logical memory, logical file systems and protocols, device control, grants us access to various things such as abstract devices, HID drivers, generic hardware access, interrupts, page allocation, block devices, and network interfaces. And finally, the hardware interfaces are the device drivers for such things as our peripherals, buses, CPUs, physical memory, disk controllers, or networks. And you can see how that kind of goes down here at the bottom. We have the actual hardware, which are our peripherals such as keyboards, graphics cards, cameras, audio, mouse, such as IO memory ports, ACPI, USB controllers, PCI controllers. The CPU has various different registers and interrupts that help you perform all, all sorts of operations through the CPU. Then for memory, you have RAM, DMA, and MMU. Disk controllers include SATA and SCSI. 
And finally, network controllers, things that help you access your ethernet port or Wi-Fi adapter. It's too bad that this hasn't been updated in a while. Here's the actual project on GitHub if you wanna check it out under Make Linux, the Linux kernel map. There is a second kernel diagram flow. If you don't wanna actually look at some of the functions and implementations that are given to us by the kernel, instead, this clears things up a little bit for us, making it a little easier to follow. Same concept, you have rows and columns and various layers on the left-hand side and parts of the kernel at the user space level up top. This one makes it a little easier to look at things without getting confused with the various different functions of each. You can scroll through them and look at them real closely if need be. Now this one looks like it has been kept up to date by Constantine. It's absolutely fantastic what open source brings us. Make sure to thank an open source developer or contributor today for all their hard work and time that they've put in to make our lives a little better. And make sure to bookmark this so you can use it in the future when you're trying to understand how the various different portions of the Linux kernel communicate with each other. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.